Hey guys, got a quick little video here for you today. Uh, this is regarding the TA1042 military field phones. They are pretty neat online. They don't do a whole lot, but they are something that's kind of cool to have. So uh, these were standard issue for bases and you would see these at, I'm assuming forward operating bases and uh, a lot of uh, remote <clears throat> remote bases that didn't require extremely crazy infrastructure. Uh, these phones were not encrypted, so it w didn't have to be anything super important on them. If it was just locally phone to phone, um, which is what this is. Uh, that being said, the field phone concept carries over to World War One era, and that was one of the late World War One is when they came out. And that was one of the methods of getting uh, communication from one point to the other. And in some cases, there were men that would have to go out and repair the wire, which is actually an interesting mission in several video games, specifically Call of Duty 2. When you're in the Russian campaign, there's one called Repairing the Wire. So that's a pretty cool uh, reflect on the historical aspect of it. But they've been around for a while, the concept is nothing new, and the system is just digitized now, but it's not encrypted. So if you put an analog speaker onto the phone lines, you wouldn't really hear anything unless you had a similar phone down the line. That being said, uh, these were working in several different ways, uh, more than what I could tell you today. But what I do know is there is a knob right here. We have LB, CB, I think LB is local something, CB is set up for a controller. But there was a large head unit, looked very similar to a PRC-77. And they were designed to operate as the switching system, and they would run off the, I believe the digital port here would plug into the switching network on base, if the base had one set up. We have a standard number pad here. I'm assuming there would be a directory on each phone that would tell point A to point B what the different numbers and different ranks were. We have some scary buttons here, F, O, F, I, P, C, R. There is an uh, amazing explanation online by Curious Mark uh, who goes down the list of what each button does and how it operates. And um, I actually looked at Curious Mark's video to check out some of these videos, um, check out the video, the concept of these phones and figure out if they'd be a cool buy or not. And uh, one thing I want to show everybody that I haven't seen on YouTube today is just a simple phone to phone conversation and how it works and what the ring sounds like because I didn't see any videos um, of what the ring pops up when it's local to local and how the phone actually works. Is it half duplex? Is it full duplex? Is it press to talk? So. We're going to go over that today, and I'm also going to show you all how to set this up for local local. And additionally, um, if you guys or if somebody's looking for a phone system from their house to a barn, and they want kind of a cool look to it, these are actually really cheap. They're about $80 a piece, give or take, on eBay. Maybe I paid too much. I'm not sure. That's just what was available. They were also tested, working, confirmed by the seller which to me is worth its weight in gold, so that's fine. Um, I don't mind paying a little bit more if that's the case. But uh, the only downside to these is they will not work with a normal landline, so you can't just go home and plug them into your um, landline system and make a call. If you want to do that and it's something you want to do, uh, go over to Curious Mark's videos, and I will link one of his video for that in my description. He does a phenomenal job of showing how to explain it and how to actually physically get into the depths of doing it. There are lots of things that have to be modified. The keypad has to be modified. The phone has to be modified. And you basically got to take apart the entire phone unit. So I didn't buy it for that. I just bought it for phone to phone. Just kind of neat. Something cool, something fun to have around the house. On the front panel here, we got very, very simple systems, controls, volume knob, minimum max, and then the ring volume off and max. We have our power incoming volt. Uh, the power volt, the power for these units is anywhere from 12 volts DC to 24 volts DC. We have RCV up here in the left, which is for receive, and then XMT, which is for transmit. 
And then, like I said, we have our selector here, which you would choose uh, what mode to select. So if we were on base with a switching unit, I'm under the assumption we would either be 16 or 32, and the switching unit would basically take control of the phone, assign it numbers, and this, that, and the other. Uh, local to local, your, your buttons here won't work. They won't do anything, and neither will the number pads because we are local to local. So I have my two phones running off of a 12 volt power supply currently at 13.36 volts. And I just have some ethernet wire I took for a uh, laying around the house and I have that hooked up to the phones. If you're gonna hook this up locally and you're just gonna do phone to phone, um, one phone is the remote phone, one phone is the master phone. Um, and the reason that's somewhat important to know is because the master will get your power and if you have an Ethernet cable like myself uh, You can just use two leads like for example. I have orange striped orange on the phone For my 12 volt power I apologize for the darn birds out there, but I can't tell them to shut up. They don't speak English anyway so on our master phone, we're going to have a, a different configuration as if we were on base because we're just doing local to local. So one phone, we have our RCV and XMT ports. So for example, I have my green ethernet wire on my, uh, green pair is on RCV and the blue pair is on XMT. It does not matter if these are not specific. So if I move green to this side or striped uh, white green to this side, they're going to work the same. I've already tested that. It doesn't make a difference. On the master phone, we have a different setup. So RCV over here goes to XMT over here because we want our transmitter on the phone to go into the receiver and we want our receiver on the phone to go into the transmitter. So here's the receiver. Receiver on this one is blue pair. And the XMT on this one is blue pair as well. So our transmitter is into the receiver. And on this phone, transmitter here is into the receiver here. That's the only thing you need to do for local. It's very, very simple. Uh, do not reverse the wires. Try not to do any of that. And definitely do not reverse the 12 volt DC. I am not sure if these are polarity protected. Um, my guess is they probably are because some grunt out there is going to be wiring this thing up possibly. So they had to account for that. Maybe, I don't know if somebody knows more about that. Let me know. Um, I didn't see anything on the user manual for it. Do not touch the RCV and XMT when you are picking up the phone. The voltages can vary from 56 to 58 volts pulse and that won't feel too good. So, uh, just try to avoid touching these or being anywhere near them when you ring the other phone. That being said, ringing phone to phone is very, very simple. All we have to do is pick up one phone. If I turn this light away, we can actually see we've got a green blinking light for a call coming in. So if I hang this up, it stops. And if I pick this one up, now we have a green ring on this phone as well. The phones themselves, once you pick up, they are open, which means the transmitter and receiver, the microphone and the speaker in the phone are active immediately once you pick them up and they will immediately start uh, transmitting audio to each other. So these buttons here on the bottom are not needed. They don't do anything for the local phone. Uh, they're just kind of cool looking, but I'd imagine if this was on a base, these would be used for possibly, um, I think these phones are actually phones that will hook up to radios as well. The phones are actually disconnectable. There is a radio connector up here. And if I remember correctly, I think these are just actual standard, um, like regular phone connectors for radios. Pretty sure I my this will hook up to my PRC seventy seven somewhere, but I think that's pretty much the same connector. So interesting. Um, so okay, that's 
interesting the phones will work on a PRC-77. Or maybe some modern radios out there as well. Uh, these radios, as far as age, I think they were put into service somewhere around the 1990s and up to 2005. So we're looking at about Desert Storm there and Iraqi Freedom. So that's pretty cool. Uh, at, they're completely obsolete now. You won't see these on bases anymore. Um, everything has to be encrypted, so you, this isn't going to be a thing. This is just kind of a, a fun thing to have. But uh, let's see what else. These guys will go to 1,000 feet is their normal or maximum length from distance to distance. If you go on eBay, they got spools of wire. Uh, they run about 1,000 feet. And you can use these on, that's actually what these were designed for, was the spool of wire. I don't have one. Um, I would much rather use an Ethernet line because the Ethernet gives me a 4 pair and I can use a pair for 12 volt DC. If I was a thousand feet, I don't think a DC power supply would travel a thousand feet on Ethernet. So I would probably have to have my remote phone on a separate battery. But completely doable if I wanted to go that route. If somebody wants to hook this up in a barn or an off-site room from point A, point a to point B, the 12 volt DC power supply that uses 110 AC uh, will be perfect for it. should work just fine. And as far as that goes, I think that's just about it. Like I said, there's very, very primitive technology here, um, but they're extremely advanced at the same time. I'm just not using it for the advanced part. I guess we'll do an audio test here. Pick up this phone. Pick up this phone. And I will do my best to get you guys the audio. Hello. Test. Test. T testing. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Test. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Test. So, that's what the audio sounds like. And microphone, speaker. It's the other side of the phones. So, um, for the price of these, though, it's pretty neat little toy to have around, I guess. Maybe I'll use them for something cool. Maybe I won't. Um, I could really see this being used in, if anybody's into Airsoft. I'm not into Airsoft, but if anybody's out there into Airsoft, this would be kind of a cool operation to have one phone on one base, one phone the other. The opposing team cuts the wire, and then that team with these has to go repair the wire and defend the wire. So that'd be kind of cool uh, because that was a thing back in the day. That, that was uh, in Russia for sure when that was going on. But anyway, I uh, hope you all found this somewhat beneficial. Like I said, I didn't see a video on YouTube where it was just phone to phone. And if you all have any questions regarding how to set it up, uh, like I said, I will link Curious Mark's video in this as well because he does an outstanding explanation for <clears throat> setting up, uh, saying what the FOF and IP does. Um, and I'm also completely for anybody that has experience with these phones. Uh, if there's any more additional technology that they can do or that I missed out on, uh, get, put it in the comments. I'd love to know it. And um, we might see these in a future video someday if I decide to use them around the house for something. So that being said, you'll have a great day.